Welcome back to Fire to Fork. I'm sorry it's been so long. I've been buggering around in Perth building, uh, well, this is Brian, Brian the Prado. If you haven't watched my car episodes, I totally understand that I'm, this is a cooking channel. Um, so this is my new Prado. It's my new kitchen on wheels. It's, well, it's been a huge undertaking and I'm absolutely stoked to do my first cooking episode on it. Bearing that in mind, might not be that smooth because I've only cooked a handful of meals on the back of this, so I'm still trying to work out exactly how it all works. One thing I haven't had trouble with is the awning, same one as the last car, so I'm gonna whip that out and get some shade and then we'll get to it. Okay, you all know the procedure if you've watched me before. Fire to fork means I'm cooking this on fire. So, let's make a fire. Still, of all the things in this car, this gives me so much joy. Just the ability to have running water. Okay. Set up the kitchen. Legs not entirely necessary, but it does help. And obviously, a little bit of nectar of the gods. Colonial IPA. If you've been watching for a while, you know the deal. So, today I'm making teriyaki beef, as I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video. Uh, teriyaki beef sounds easy, but have you noticed that you very rarely actually nail it at home? That's because of technique. It's not actually very difficult to cook. What it is difficult is, what it, but what it is is unusual to cook. Uh, the way you do it is completely different to basically any other meat with a marinade on it, and that is because you don't marinate it. So. In a second, it'll make more sense what I'm talking about, but in the interim, I am going to just set things up a bit better here. Okay, I'm gonna build this right up because we actually need quite a lot of heat for this dish. Um, uh, as I said, excuse all the screwing around. I just, uh, I've got a basic idea in my head of how this whole thing's gonna work, but uh, I haven't fine tuned it yet. And there are actually some bits missing that are gonna make this whole system work really well, uh, but they're not in stock yet. And I should get, actually get them this week. So hopefully by the next cooking episode, the final pieces of the puzzle will be added and this will be an absolutely killer setup. Okay, so to kick things off, uh, I want to talk about the sauce. Teriyaki sauce, uh, I like to make from scratch, but I also don't like making it from scratch. The reason I don't like making it from scratch is, eh, it, sorry, I don't like making it from scratch in the bush. It requires quite a few ingredients that you don't use for anything else. Mirin, sake, soy, absolutely I use that for other stuff, but it requires a lot of soy, like an entire bottle of soy to make the kind of batches that I usually make, which is a double batch. Um, yeah, so sake, mirin, um, and soy, garlic and um, ginger. Garlic and ginger, totally fine. Soy, totally fine, but a lot of it. Uh, and then the other ones, you're kind of like, what am I gonna use sake and mirin for in a general, like for general camp cooking? So I prefer to make a batch of it at home and just have it as teriyaki sauce. It lasts, honestly, months. At, like months and months and months. Uh, I don't know how many, I, I wouldn't, like, I don't like to give out sort of um, health advice, but it, I mean, I've drunk it a year later and it was totally fine. So um, definitely just make more and make it at home. So I'm gonna put up the ingredients and directions on the screen here. Uh, take a screenshot of it, take a photo of you with your phone. Um, and I'll show you basically how you make it at home. It's extremely easy. You chop up a bit of ginger, uh, make sure it's nice and fine, bit of garlic in there, 
add the three sauces, chuck it in a pot. As soon as it's reached the, reached the boil, you take it off. Once it's um, cooled down a little bit, you just pour it through a strainer um, and that's it. Just, I've just put mine in some Tupperware, thrown it in my fridge, and now it's with me camping. I recommend putting it in like a bottle or something though. Now, this works better if it's a little bit, hey, leave it Fred, leave it. Um, this works better if it's in a bottle or something just for storage, but uh, I've got these sealed Tupperwares and they seem to work pretty well in my, my fridge. Um, and it was just the thing that was in front of me at the time. All I'm gonna do, I find it works better for the dish when it's warm. So, pour it into a cup. Uh, this is just like a melamine cup. Little talus go on, which is pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna put, throw that on there. Don't know how Talisker's gonna feel about me ruining their cup, but oh well. Here you go, bud. And I'll just leave that there for a bit. Next stage, rice. Rice is a pretty easy one. Uh, you take a vessel of some kind. Now, usually I use one of my wooden cups, uh, which by the way, as at the date of releasing this video, I have wooden cups in stock. So jump on there quick because they sell out in about a day. Uh, I am gonna get some, sorry, again, losing my, losing my way here. Some rice, a vessel of some kind, not one of my cups. What's that? Oh, it's my GoPro turning off. That's useful. This is a rare occasion. I actually brought my GoPro batteries. I've forgotten the last like three trips I've done. It's not me just playing on my phone. If you're wondering, if you see this in the fast forwarded bits, it's uh, I'm using this as a screen for the GoPro so that I can get the overhead angle. But as you know, I leave everything in. So if you want to see that, what's and all, including me adjusting my GoPro, that's what, that's what I left in. So now, vessel. Note to self, don't put on any more weight. Otherwise you won't be able to fit through there until the new setup. Well, not new setup, but the final setup. Okay, I'd like to say I'm out of practice or something, but I have no real excuse for why I'm buggering around so much. Um, I actually filmed an episode yesterday for a, a company and um, it went beautifully. Basically did it all in one take. Yes, you will get to see those other episodes soon. I'll let you know who the company is very soon. It's really exciting, it's actually gonna be great. I don't know why I measured that out again. Hold on a sec. All good, just making sure my camera doesn't cut out. These cameras have a 29 and a half minute recording limit. Um, so uh, that was at 24 and a half minutes. It's this stupid legal thing uh, from Europe. Anyway, I'm just rinsing the rice. Get a bit of that excess starch out of there. And look, I've used um, Japanese sushi rice. It's cheap, readily available, and I just think it goes really well with Japanese food. It kind of sticks together nicely and it's good. So you wanna give it a bit of a rinse, not that it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, you do one part rice, one and a half parts water. Although apparently, as every Asian friend I've got has told me, that is a lie. You do to like one of your knuckles or something. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean you measure rice? <laughs> that is stupid. Stupid white boy. And basically give that a bit of time and sit back and have a beer. Okay, it has been approximately one beer. So, fix that. Now, first thing we need is a travel braai or a camp braai, some sort of a grilly product. You don't have to do this, but when you see how the technique is done, uh, you'll realize how bloody good having one of these things is. Some sort of a grill basket. Um, most of the grill baskets in the market are chrome plated steel so they rust pretty quickly this is full stainless that's why I use them just so you know it's like this is not just some 
full sponsored plug, um, although I am supported by Osbri, these baskets I genuinely use because they're the best value and quality on the market that I can find. In my, I was looking at my fridge. In my freezer, I have a piece of Wagyu. Yeah, Wagyu. So this is a Wagyu porterhouse that I got from my local butcher. It's been in there for about an hour and a half. So it's really cold, but not frozen. The reason you want it really cold is, as I've said in other videos before, um, if you have it nice and cold, it's much less likely to overcook when you sort of flash fry it. So, I actually love the fat on my beef in these meals. So what I'm gonna do is just do some long cuts down it. Um, and the reason for that is I just find it renders and goes so well with the teriyaki sauce. Just ridiculously well. Now you notice that um, this piece and this piece have hardly any fat. This one's got quite a lot. Uh, I'm gonna put these pieces here, right in the middle of my grill basket where there's most likely to be the most heat. So, why am I using Wagyu? Well, there's a reason that the Japanese use Wagyu for it, and that's because it goes incredibly. And do not think for a second, this is like a waste of Wagyu or anything like that. It is absolutely not. There's nothing that will make Wagyu taste better than a bit of teriyaki sauce and direct flame grill for a short period of time. Now you notice I haven't put anything on it. Oh, actually, sorry, I've forgotten something. Asparagus. Now usually I'd, um, actually this is baby asparagus. Usually I'd uh, crack them off individually, but I can't be bothered today. So I'm gonna use about half of that. I'm just gonna throw them down in there. And there's a little trick with those as well. Look, you will occasionally see me do this. I have to take photos because of course, I've got the cookbook coming out and cookbook's not much bloody good without some photos of things. So chuck the top of the travel bribe back on. Make sure there's a bit of space on your grill. That rice is nearly done. Uh, Make sure you got your little paintbrush ready. Oh, and prep your veggies. Now the reason I'm putting oil on the veggies and not the beef is because oil will actually, um, sesame oil specifically, it's gonna add a really nice flavor to the veggies, but what it's gonna also do is protect it from the marinade. And that sounds weird, but I don't want teriyaki on teriyaki on teriyaki. So I want some kind of sesame flavored veggies, not just full teriyaki everything. So a bit of sesame oil on them, going to protect them nicely but they're going to cook at the same time. Move this, these guys over, let's get into it. So I've got heaps and heaps of heat on here and what I'm going to do is just paint the top of this beef. You know when you go to a Japanese restaurant um, and you get the teriyaki beef and it's got this kind of thick layer of teriyaki over it? That is not from marinating, that is from doing this. You baste and you flip. And you do this a lot. And this is why the basket is so bloody useful. The travel bra is so useful for this because imagine having to flip all of those individually. Baste, flip, baste, flip, baste, flip constantly. One thing to take into account is the fact that there's a lip on this. Now that lip is going to mean that um, you need to do one side longer than the other, the side with the lip that's spacing it up, you need to do it for a fraction longer than the other side. Not an issue, just something to take into, take into account. All right, I reckon that's pretty much done. And we flip. You want as much heat on this as possible. So I'm not, I actually want a little bit more. There's a bit of wind getting around here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a blast with the air hose. Alright, there we go, now we're talking. Serious hate. We want to start to see this blacken on both sides. 
There we go, look at that. Immediately, once I got that extra heat on there, it's looking much better. Because you don't want to overcook this, it's still wag you. I'm going to put a little bit on this asparagus, just not much, like that's it. One, one quick baste. You do, you do want the teriyaki on it. It's just not tons. And I also love that sesame flavor infusing it. This is looking really good. Properly blasting it. That's probably ready to come off. Oh, look at that. Blackened, beautiful, let's put it up. Okay, that is a lot of steak actually. So I'm gonna have some leftovers, which is awesome. Hold on, I think this is a bit wrong, I'm gonna move this. That seems about right. So, let's get some of this beautiful steak out. Oh, no, rice first. Then I'm gonna use a bit of this Nori Komi Fukaki Fukaki seasoning, which I haven't had much of, but before, I, mean, I got it the other day, and now I'm kind of addicted. It's freaking amazing. This beef out, dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, there's a little bit of um, cherry sauce on the beef. You always gonna have a little bit too much, you know what it's like. So it soaks into the rice and I'm really annoyed I forgot chopsticks. And there's nothing on here, there's nothing out here, there's a beach, so I've got no chance of making them. Beautiful. This is ridiculous. Mm. Right, I'm gonna have a bite of the whole thing. So a bit of the rice with the, yeah, I don't really want to say that word. <laughs> Fukak. Yeah. It's just, it's beautiful beefy flavor. The teriyaki brings out the beefy flavor. Oh, sorry, again, ch no chopsticks. Freshens it up. It's sweet and salty, as everything basically should be. Texture is amazing, it's slightly fatty. Um, it honestly tastes like a meal that I'd get for $90 in a top quality Japanese restaurant. Um, that's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Tell you what, if you love Japanese food and you want to spoil someone or spoil yourself, go and get a small, really nice piece of steak. I, mean, I only used half a steak here for my whole meal. So yes, it's 80 bucks a kilo, 90 bucks a kilo. But when you're only using 250 grams, eh, 10 bucks each. It's not that bad for what would be the equivalent piece of meat they'd use in a really expensive restaurant meal. This is not your average Japanese takeaway stuff. Like, they are not using, you know, five grad Wagyu in your average Japanese place. This is really, really, really bloody good. Oh. All right. Sorry for the delay with these videos. We'll be back next week with another one. In the interim, I'm going to destroy this. I can't keep doing this. I'm gonna get so fat. Worth it.